happy arm brew wednesday guys um this mixed berry sour uh i had it on the keg for a party about two weeks ago um this is pretty much the end of it i had problems with the keg at the time we getting blocked with fruit and had to transfer to another keg so it's pretty well been oxidized to hell and back but uh still pretty tasty I mean, it's become it's getting right down to the end and it's getting quite sour now um, I it was just a plain beer that had gone a bit sour through using Ian Bourne's um, yeast that he sent me which is a mix of uh, Brett wild yeast and Saccharomyces uh, and I just did a normal beer with it on and it got quite sour so I chucked a load of fruit in um, to make it a bit sweeter for when I needed it. I knew that I put it in, I had two days, I put it in and two days later we'd all be drinking it. Uh, and it was perfect then, it was spot on, exactly what I wanted from it. And obviously most of it went then, but the bit that's been left has steadily got more sour obviously as the, that fruit has been eaten through by the breath and such. So it's it's what it is really. It was cracking beer at the time. Uh, the mango lassie went. There was about two, three glasses left after the party, so I really didn't get any bottled for anyone. Which, sorry, I will brew it again. Um, I won't be having a party with it this time. It will be that I get some bottles and I get to drink some because I haven't got a lot. I've not had a lot of it myself in the last two or three brews. Um, what else has been happening? Well, whilst I had the party. A uh, friend brought me this. I'll just see you outside. Abbey Homebrew sign. Which is nice. Um, he has a laser cutter and um, uses CNC, I believe it's called, for. Uh, he makes end cheeks for uh, cog, etc. Do you call it synthesizers, etc. He makes end cheeks for him, um, and so he made that for me. He said it took him half an hour, then he lacquered it, so it's gone nicely out on the wall. This is good. And uh, more beer related things, I finally got these, which are a selection of Quake yeast from uh, Quake World Order, which is a Facebook group. It was his autumn, or the, uh, he's American, so it was his fall. Um, giveaway of yeast and they finally came last week I think it was so I've got a Voss um, which is easily available I know and what else did I get uh, Simonitis which I'm really looking forward to doing a beer with um, Vol which I haven't really looked at Mud King which I've heard good things about and I have a beer from Ian Bourne that used Mud King uh, I've got to taste that to see what it's like. Uh, and then one by uh, Tej, which is... I, uh, it's a Honendal. I think it's a Honendal Quake. Anyway, lots of lovely Quake there. The Simonitis, I'm really looking forward to doing a beer with that. I'm doing that one possibly in a couple of weeks. Possibly a no-boil. So I might do some video footage of that, because that should be interesting. Because uh, there's... This is a uh, Lithuanian quake yeast, which also has, I believe, bacterials, wild in, and possibly a bit of bread or something. I'm looking forward to that. Also, I bought some amylase. Uh, that just came th this evening. Well, it came today, but I, I got it this evening. Uh, why haven't I bought amylase? Well, there's a new um, style of beer. Seems to be getting popular on the west coast of America. And uh, champagne IPAs, which are very dry, um, down to 1.000 or, or even below. Um, so the amylase will help convert the starches into sugars in the mash for the old yeasties to eat to get it right down, get a really dry beer. Um, simple malt bill. I think I'll go with the pills and this. This is going to be a brew, brew this weekend. So a simple malt bill, 
with that um, possibly just Pilsner maybe a touch of Golden Promise in there maybe just half a kilo or a kilo um, what you don't know what you used to use I might just use a US05 keep it clean um, that should get it down with it with it with this amylase I should be able to get it right down anyway um, for a really good attenuation and get it clear so it's clear clean crisp and fruity because it's an IPA so you know I'm gonna check a lot of I might go with Citra just for the first time to see what it's like to try and do a champagne IPA um, so I think that's pretty much covered everything I've uh, got to say um, at the minute in the fermenter I've just got a simple pale ale um, it's an American pale it's my first time using uh, Victoria Secret uh, Vic Secret I've combined it with uh, mosaic so it's mosaic, big secret, mostly golden promise malt with a kilo of pilsner malt in. So it's meant to be light, and I've tried to get, keep it sessionable. But uh, OG came out at 1.045. I was looking for 1.041 to get it about 4.3, and it's dropped down to about 1.007, I think it is at now. Um, just dry hopped with about 70 grams of mosaic, 70 grams of Vic Secret. Uh, I didn't do any um, early boil. Uh, I did some at 15 minutes and some at flame out. So it's not going to have high IBUs either. So it's a low IBU, sessionable pale ale. Um, it should go down easy. So hopefully that will be ready for this weekend. But I won't be watching the Royal Wedding. But it'll certainly be ready in time for the FA Cup final, which I'm looking forward to. As a neutral, that is. Um, yeah, that's about it. My party went well. Uh, it was a good success. Uh, I found these. Pound in Poundland, funnily enough. Pound each these. Perfect. Fill these up. Check them out. People pour away. They were quite a bargain. I was quite impressed with them. Um, I think that's really it. Um, I've still got some elderflowers um, in the freezer from last season. So I want to get uh, an elderflower champagne done at some point. Um, I might do it with Kraik yeast. I need to get a new fermenter then because I've only got the one at the minute because I threw one. Um, I'd had enough of it. We, I'd had a couple of uh, issues and I just thought do you know what get rid of it it isn't worth the effort of trying to clean it and then brew with it I'll just get a new one um, I need to do that um, get some more bottles I need some more bottles for bottling to send out to people I've got loads of uh, home brews in, in the Kiza for me to try and review I've got a couple of beers I've tried um, I think it's David Boxall's beers I tried, his two beers, and so I need to get those reviews up. They're done, I've done the reviews, I just need to edit the footage and put it up. Um, it's been a bit awkward with that, um, I have a two year old, it makes life a bit difficult at times and work etc. But I, I, I do intend to get onto it, sorry if you're watching David, um, I will get them up. And that's really... I've waffled now for nearly 10 minutes, so if I do this champagne IPA, which I am planning to do, I'll try and do a video of that because it's something different. As I say, I want to do something with the no boil with simonitis, which I'm planning to do with, um, that's going to be mostly Pilsner malt, and I might get some wheat malt for it as well, uh, and use Nelson Sauvain. Uh, I'm going with a... Uh, a recipe by Dwayne Schaff, who is the guy that runs Kvaik World Order. Um, he's on Milk the Funk Facebook group. If you ever get the chance, join. It's very, very interesting. Um, very yeast based, very wild yeast, bacteria, etc. There's a lot of lot of brain power in there. Um, you got microbiologists, um, pro brewers, etc. It's very good informative Facebook group if you get a chance and obviously join Brewtube Brewtube official um, a lot of fun friendly people 
a lot of information, a lot of sharing of information, and about videos and such. It's uh, if you're not on, get on there as well. And that's I think. Oh yes, um, just past the 500 mark uh, on subs. So I'll have to look at doing uh, uh, a competition of some sort. So look out for that. Cheers and thank you, and happy homebrew Wednesday.